Hi, Nicole. Uh, it's it's me, Bill Salek. Uh, Dr. Delamater asked me to talk a little bit with you about making your own mallets. And I would have loved to do this in person, but I'm not going to be able to get up to Oshkosh. But I want you to have this information. More people should have this information. Um, more people should know what it's like to make your own stuff because as as you as you as I'm sure you're starting to learn you learn a lot about what you like and what you don't like and what kind of sounds work for you when you make your own mallets um I've been doing it since my undergrad which is a number of years ago um I started learning to wrap mallets and then uh to start learning more about mallet construction I basically started shredding the mallets that I owned and looking at what was inside um and we're, we're really fortunate right now because I have right here a commercially made mallet that I'm about to send off to get rewrapped. And it is the Malatex Stevens 10. I don't know if you can read that. Um, I really like the Stevens 1s and the Stevens 5s for certain things. Uh, Above the 10s, they get really hard and bright. They don't work with my playing, but the 1s, 5s, and 10s really work well for me. Um, when I had my 1s and 5s rewrapped, I shredded them to see what was inside. I shredded this one, and this is what's inside. Um, what you have here is a birch dowel with a plastic poly ball on the end of it. You can hear how hard it is. It's pretty hard. And it has a piece of rubber tubing around it. More about rubber tubing in part two. It's cheap and it's really valuable. Um, so it's a mallet with a very, very light plastic hard core, and that has ramifications for everything down the line. Um, because a marimba mallet, just like a vibraphone mallet or a timpani mallet, the character of that mallet is basically the character of its core. So there's really nothing I can do to make this a mallet that will be dark and soft. I can't just take this core and pile rubber and pile yarn on it and turn it into a, turn it into a heavy, heavy, dark mallet at Forte. It just doesn't work that way. Um, so the core material is really important. Now there's a wide variety of things. There are, um, there are other kinds of polyball cores. This is a, a same size as this one. It's just red. Um, you can get them smaller. This is this one up here, like the Stevens mallets, is one and one eighth inch. This one's a little bit smaller. It's one inch, and I got these from Smith Mallets on eBay. Um, you can write to them with a special order, and they'll take their their polyball mallets and put them on full concert length birch, if birch is what you like. More about handles in a minute. There are also, of course, rubber cores. This is the Malatec Natural Rubber 19 on birch, which is a fairly medium mallet. Um, and rubber cores tend to get even bigger. This is a IP Ensemble 360, which a lot of people use as is for Steve Reich's music and for marimba ensemble stuff. Uh, this is an old Terry Gibbs vibraphone mallet core from Vic Firth. It's kind of this one and a quarter inch diameter. You can see these two are the same, the black and the green one are the same diameter, but the green one's kind of a puck shape. There's a really wide variety of cores out there. Um, and with various treatments and wrappings, they all work pretty well. Um, core materials are where independent mallet makers like you and I are at a real disadvantage because the the companies that make those are basically industrial companies and they want to make things in very very large quantities they're happy to sell you a bunch of rubber cores but a bunch is like a thousand or two thousand or five thousand and it's an it's a big uh, upfront investment um and if you're not, if you're just making mallets for yourself, it's really hard to justify buying five thousand rubber balls and having them all over your living room. So there are a couple different things you can do. One, you can uh, do what I do and find small companies like Smith that are willing to sell you unwrapped mallets on dowels like this. Um, you can also go looking on eBay. Uh, I'm working off a very, very large stock right now. Someone who used to be into experimenting with mallets when they were in school was just 
selling a giant crate of mallet supplies and rattan handles and dowel handles and a bunch of cores and a bunch of unwrapped sticks and was just getting rid of them. It doesn't happen very often, but if you happen to see that, you should jump on it. Um, I also came across a bunch of cores at Steve Weiss once. If you've never visited Steve Weiss in Philadelphia, the actual place, you should go because they have an incredible bee stock room in the back where they have things that not only aren't listed on the website but are things that they can't sell uh, oh, you know, online at all, by mail order at all, but they're there. Um, there's a whole bucket of triangle beaters that they were selling for a dollar each because they had some blemishes, and there were little Ziploc baggies of pre-drilled mallet cores that some company had sent them as prototypes that never got made into anything, and I bought them all really cheaply. Um, so, but like I said, sources for cores are really hard. Uh, I guess you could try calling up a large mallet manufacturer and see if they're, see if they're willing to sell you drilled mallet cores, not on dowels. Um, they may, they may not. I would be, I would be very surprised if they did, because again, one of the thing, one of the advantages they have over us is that they can buy those cores in quantity. They're really the only people who have access to them. Um, but keep looking. Uh, if you go to PASIC, when you go to PASIC, drop by places like Steve Weiss. Drop by the Encore booth. They're always selling unwrapped mallets on handles for usually not much money. Um, and I've done a lot of really good work with just those mallets. Uh, we talked about cores. Let's talk about handles really quickly. I don't know what your preferences are. Uh, when I play marimba, I'm I'm a Stevens Technique guy most of the time, which means I'm a birch guy most of the time, or at least a dowel guy. Most of the commercial ones are on birch. I know that Vic Firth uses maple. Um, and when I've made some of my own stuff, uh, when I go to Lowe's, a lot of times they're red oak dowels. You can see the color difference here. You can see that the, the birch on top is lighter. The red oak is a little bit darker. It has a little bit of a different flex, but generally you're going to want to go to the hardware store and buy the highest quality, straightest, 5 16 inch diameter wooden dowels that you can. They might be birch, they might be poplar, they might be maple, they might be red oak. But that's generally what you want to go for. If you're a rattan person, I hate to say this, but good luck finding a steady supply of decent rattan that isn't in industrial length, isn't in industrial size quantities. Um, there are places you can go. There are places online that uh, do like rush and caning for chairs for upholstery uh, that sometimes sell what's called kubu rattan, which is the small diameter rattan. Uh, that we use for mallet handles. The good news is that what, I, what I'm just starting to experiment with are, sorry, um, instead of rattan are phenolic tubes. They look kind of like dowels, um, but I'll just show you the end here. You can see that it's it's a hollow tube and it's it's actually a a plastic resin impregnated cloth or paper that's rolled up into a tube shape and then left to cure and dry it flexes like rattan but because it's a manufactured material and not a um, not a natural material it can be manufactured to very good uh, straightness tolerances and dimensional tolerances. This is 5 16 inch diameter phenolic tube with a 1 16 inch wall. Um, when we talk about latex tubing in the next video, we're going to talk more about those, you know, those kinds of industrial dimensions. But basically, anything that's a tube, you're going to want to know its outer diameter, its inner diameter, and the wall thickness so that you can get stuff. So this is, like I said, 5 16 inch outer diameter. 3 16 inch inner diameter with a 1 16 inch wall and of course outer diameter wall inner diameter and then a wall all the math should add up there but this works really well and the nice thing about having it you know 5 16 is a little bit narrower than normal rattan but because it's the same diameter as the dowel you don't have to worry about getting two different size drill bits to drill out your rattan cores or your birch cores you can just have one size drill them out mount them on. Speaking of mounting them on, uh, there are some different adhesive options. Some companies use crazy glue. I am a giant crazy glue opponent.
It doesn't create a bond that stands up to torque and impact, and it creates a very, very rigid bond, which means it's going to crack and your mallet heads are going to come off. Um, I like the kinds of glue that are meant for uh, household repair, um, things like shoe goo that have a flexible bond, or things like you know, anything uh, that comes in a small tube like Loctite makes something called extreme temperature repair glue, and it works It works really, really well. Um, if you have a lot of mallets to do and you can afford to do it with two-part epoxy, that's fine. It's not the two-part epoxy is expensive. It's that once you start mixing it, you have five minutes to work with it, and then it's hard forever and unusable. Um, so you can do two-part epoxy, you can do uh, any kind of household repair glue, um, but I would stay away from wood glue, I would stay away from Elmer's, and I would stay away from crazy glue for mounting uh, cores on handles. Uh, as far as getting the phenolic tubes go, my, fa it, my favorite supply place online is a place called McMaster Car. Um, I'll put this thing in, um, in iMovie and put a little caption, McMaster Car. Dot com. Um, you can get your rubber tubing there, you can get your phenolic tubes there if you like rattan. Dowels just come from the hardware store, and like I said, cores are wherever you can get them. Uh, I'll be back in a little bit, and we'll talk about what to do with a mallet core once you have it on a handle. Bye.